Hello Rust developers and welcome to the Rust Projects video series. If you want to learn anything about Rust, this is your channel. Rust Navigation, Rust with Drones, Rust for Autonomous Cars, everything Rust is here. Learn Rust step by step and push your Rust learning in just 10 minutes of video. I am Marco Huda and today we are going to learn about Chakros. In this video we will learn how to use it and finish our robotic manipulator. The same robot we are going to use in next episodes. But before anything else, remember to visit the Robot Ignite Academy, our online academy where you'll find practical online ROS courses using simulated robots. No installation required. You'll find a link to the academy on the video description. Now let's start with our robot. Uh, I'm going to use ROS Development Studio as usual. If you don't have an account yet, you can create one for free. Just following the sign up link, you can find the link at the description of the video and start using RDS for free. So I have my account already. I'm just going to open an empty project here. I'm calling video number two. And as you can see, I have just an empty project because I want to show you how you can start following this project from scratch. You can find a description of the video, a link to the public repository, and you can start just cloning it. Okay, this is a robot description package and we are gonna simulate it further. So you have to clone this repository to the simulation workspace. So let's enter here, simulation workspace source folder and clone our public repo. And there it is. Now you have to compile just to generate the, the header files. So ROS commands can find our package. After compiling it, source devil setup bash file. This is a very basic thing of ROS. If you don't remember exactly what it's necessary, I recommend you to get the ROS basic in five days of the academy. So let's start taking a look at the model we have built in the previous video. In order to see RVs, you have to open graphical tools. And let's put it bigger and the same for the IDE. And there it is. We have created only base link and link number one. You can see it rotating. Okay. And now let's start finishing our model, which is basically, uh, I have the model already here. So I'm just going to copy and paste and show you how it has to be done. I mean, the links and properties. So first thing, uh, that's the robot we want to achieve. So we have created base link, this joint here, and link number one. Now we have to create one, two, three, four, four joints and four links. Okay. I'm going to create the first one, which is link number two, and it's joint. So we have a joint between link number one and link number two and the link number two. Let's refresh our model. Just control C and relaunch RVs. And we may see the robot with a new link. So there it is. You can see the link here and rotates, etc. blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> very nice. So now let's do the same for the rest of the robot. I'm not gonna do the same process for each one because we want to save some time here. And the purpose of this video is not anymore about joint and links, but how we can simplify this file. Okay, so let's relaunch Arvis again. You can check the values uh, on your own pace. Just I'm going to push it to the repository later at the end of the video. But for instance, let's just focus on how we can simplify, as you can see, uh, we have all the links here. You can play for a while and randomize the values for the joints. And I don't know, let's just rotate the base link and you can see the robot, how it is. And very nice. So let's just stop playing and let's get back to work. So as you can see, we have many links and many joints here. And this file is becoming bigger. And this is just the very beginning because for each link, we have 
not just the visual, but we have also collision properties and inertial properties. And this file is going to be like three times what we have here. So in order to make it easier to maintain this kind of files, robot description files, we can use macro files or chakra files, XML macros. So let's start doing it. And the first thing I want to simplify is that our links, they are using, they are actually very look like to each other. So we can simplify it. Let's start creating a function here, a file actually, and I'm going to call it link, links, joints, chakra. And I have the function here already defined, some macros defined. This is an XML file. And I want to choose two spaces for my tab. Okay. And the first thing here, I have created a function M joint. I'm not calling it just joint because we have already a tag predefined joint. Okay. So basically what you have to do is instead of creating a link using this description here, you can just call this guy here, this function here, my link cylinder or my link box which is the function that I have created. How this chakra, this macro works? Basically, I am defining a name to a tag and defining the attributes that I'm gonna pass to this macro, which are the, the important attributes, the important parameters that are changing between one link and another. For example, what's the difference between this link here and this one? Well, we have the name, the origin, row pitch and yaw can change, X, Y, and Z, and the geometry. This one is a box and this another is using a cylinder. So we don't have to, we have to simplify it. Uh, we don't want to write every time all the attributes, everything, and just to change this thing, this, these values. So what do you do? We use to copy and paste, and this is very prone to errors. That's why you should be using chakras. So let's start substituting and uh, replacing the, the, the commands here. So instead of using link for base link, I'm just going to call link box. Okay. So I'm going to copy what, what I have here. And instead of using this link for the base link, I'm going to use my link box. And the name of it is base link the row pitch and of the origin and X, Y, and Z and the size of the box. Okay. Uh, in order to use this function, I have to include the file. So let's do it at the beginning and let's put some comments here so we can see very clear where we are including files and where the robot description begins and ends. Okay. And there it is. So we are including my robotic manipulator description inside URDF. We have a file called links joints chakra, this file here. And now let's see if it's working. We have just replaced one link. Let's launch again. And instead of define the link with a regular description, we are using our chakra. And there it is. We have the same result, the same robot, but now we are writing less instructions, less prone to errors. Okay. So let's do the following for the rest of the robot. Now for the first joint between base link and link number one, I have the same here. And now we have, instead of a box, we have cylinder. So I'm going to use the second macro. Okay. Actually, it's not necessary that you create another function just because it's using a box or a cylinder you have options to, you can pass a parameter specifying if it's a box or not. But for instance, let's keep it like that. Let's keep it simple, but you can check uh, more features of Chakra in this page here. Okay. Don't forget to select kinetic, which is the ROS version we are using. And you have many, many options, many advanced features you can use to simplify your life while you are, you are writing XML files. Okay. So let's get back here to our model and 
now we have the second link of the robot being described by Chakra. So let's relaunch it. And there it is. We have the same robot, the same result, but now using much less instructions. So let me copy the rest of the file here and paste. And you can see we were almost 100 lines of code and now we have just 60 lines. So let's launch again the robot and make sure everything is working. There it is, same result. And we can play for a while with a robot. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I have committed a mistake here because of copy and paste, because the last joint of the robot uh, is a revolute joint, but not around Y axis, but around Z axis. So let's change it in our last joint. Instead of rotate around Y axis, it has to rotate around Z axis. Let's save the file and relaunch RVs. Oops, not C, but one. And there it is. Let's randomize the values. And now let's rotate the last link and there it is, now it's correct. As you can see, it's quite hard to see because it's rotating around the Z axis, but it's possible to see it's moving. If you prefer, you can also use here in Arvis. You can expand, expand the, the options of the last link and show axis. It's easier to see the rotation of the axis around the Z axis. You see the Z axis is the blue one. So it's rotating around it. Okay, great, there it is. And now we have the same robot, the same description using Chakra, which is much simpler to use. And you can save some, some time. Uh, instead of copy and paste, you can just type what really matters for the robot. Okay, just one more thing is that I don't like to write the same thing twice, for example, I'm writing here base link and again, again base link and link number one for the joint because I like to define, that's my standard of defining a joint. I like to write the parent link, uh, two underscores and the child link. So instead of writing like this, I want to define some names. So let's do like this, uh, just to show you one more possibility, not because this is necessary or the correct way, but another possibility of chakras, you can define some properties. So let's create a new file here. I'm going to call it robot parameters. We're going to improve this file later with the dimensions of the robot. But for instance, let's just use the name of the robot. So we have, uh, let's call this parameter link zero zero. Okay. Let's call them like this. And as you can see, it's going to be much easier for us to write the name of the links instead of writing the entire name. We can just use this alias here. And how can we do that? First thing is that we have to include this file. So robot parameters, it's inside the same folder, robot parameters, chakra. And instead of type here base link, you can just put like this link zero, zero. Okay. And for the joint, underscore, underscore, like this. Okay. And for the next link, let's relaunch the robot and make sure it's working. It's very important that you try to debug your robot every small step that you doing the in the code because if you get an error like this you can just get back from the previous version so what's the mistake here fail to build tree 
share the link link one of joint base link link one not found. Okay. So what is the problem? We have link number one. And our parameters we have base link and link number one. Uh, so the modification was like this. Ah, okay, just syntax error. And we can also change here link 00, zero and link 01. This is why it's very important to debug every small step of code. Instead of doing a very big modification, just do it a small step, make sure it's working, and then do it for the rest of the robot. Okay? So the same result again, just simplifying our life as developers. Okay? So in order to have the last, latest version, I'm just going to do the same for the rest of the robot. So we have here link 01 underscore link 02. And why it's so important? Because I have to modify it in many places. And actually, I'm typing actually the same amount of code. It's not easier to type this. Actually, the real thing here is that you have the flexibility to change the name of the links <coughs> as you wish. For example, I have defined the first link as base link, but if you don't like it, you don't have to change here and here again, the name of the joint, and again, the name of the parent of the joint. You just have to modify in a single place. That's why it's necessary. Now I have to modify in many places because I started using static values in my code. But now, if I want to change it, I just have to change in a single place because we can because we, we have everything parameterized. So you have a single file with the parameter values where you can change and reflect in all of your code. Okay, so let's finish it. And instead of doing this, let me copy and paste here. Of course, it's much easier. And I hope you got the idea. So for the parameters, I have the name like this. Okay. So that's it. That's all for today. In the description of the video, you'll find a complete course about ROS, URDF, how to model a robot, and all the resources mentioned along the video. Did you like the video? If you did, please give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel and press the bell to be notified about the videos we publish every day. Either you like it or not, please share your thoughts and questions in the comments area. See you!